Bucks head coach Norman Knapp. Coach, congrats. Salamat, thank you. Strong game one performance from the team. How important is it to start the series on a victory like this? Uh, it's very important to get that first win. Um, you know, if you fall behind in the series, it becomes that much harder to catch up. I thought we really got off to a great start today offensively, and our defense held up very, very well. I thought the locals did a great job of um, setting the tone, particularly Malene, uh, Elaine Maliksi, who came in and was shooting very well today. Um, and finally, in, our, in the second half, pretty much, uh, Tony Bishop started um, scoring the basketball, which helped us a great deal. So first half, I thought the locals carried us for the most part. And in the second half, um, Tony stepped up and, and made some big shots for us. Um, you know, everything for us is going to be about defense. It's going to be about trying to find a way to slow them down offensively. And tonight, so far, so good. Uh, now it's on to game two uh, with a lot of the um, commotion that went on at the end of this game, I would imagine game two will be very exciting. Coach, Alain yeah. set the tone for the team in the first half. What can you say about his performance tonight? Well, it's a continuation from game five against Magnolia, where he shot the ball very, very well. Uh, we just have to make sure we have the right matchups out there. Uh, sometimes they do go big, which means they put big guys at the three position, which puts uh, Alain a little bit at a disadvantage. Whenever we can match up with him, def with them defensively, with Elaine being out there, then a lot of our offense will go through him. And um, of course, we're relying on him to hit the outside shots for us. Coach Chris played just 14 minutes plus, but he was a plus 14 and he had six assists. How important will he be for the rest of the series? Oh, come up on Cheryl. Oh, I'm so happy he was able to get out there on the basketball court. He still hasn't practiced in about three weeks. So it's amazing that he can go out and play like that without getting any practice time in. Uh, hopefully he'll be out on the practice floor tomorrow and he'll be able to get some reps in and he'll be a little bit better in game two. But just having his presence out there, he's a very good player offensively. You know, he can handle the ball really, really well. Offensively, he's solid. So uh, he gives us a big lift whenever he's on the court. Congrats. Uh, how would you assess your defense against Justin Brown? He had 27 points, but uh, shot 7 of 20 from the field. I thought Justin played pretty well tonight. He might not have shot at the percentage he's been shooting lately, but I thought he still was an offensive threat out there, and he was somebody that we had to really try to defend every time down the court. I thought both he and Stan Hardinger played very, very well offensively in this basketball game. I'm not sure how many points Stan Hardinger had, but it seemed like he did have a few. And of course, um, Scotty uh, did very, very well offensively in the first half. So um, it's always going to be a challenge to try to slow down JB because he is so potent and he's so um, effective out there on the basketball court. So you said he shot 7 for 20? Well, I'm sure he'll probably want to improve on that next game. So we have to be ready to play defense again. Coach, uh, Coach uh, of the uh, 88 teams um, that won the series of nine and the top seven seeds in the championship, you were 60 and won it all. Um, what can you say about being on the right side of the history? Is it most so? The only, only thing I can say right now is because I've been on the losing end so many times, in this conference, uh, I'm just taking it one game at a time. We got the first game, and I'm going to look at the second game like it's 0-0, and we have to get the second game. I'm going to go home and prepare, um, just like I've been doing in the, in the past. I guess it's been uh, since we started the playoffs, um, and I'm just going to make sure my team is prepared for game two. I'm going to try to anticipate adjustments they might make, and hopefully we'll be able to find a few adjustments that we can make also. Thank you. Aaron, you scored the first two points of the game, I believe. So how, how important must that be for us? Uh, your confidence is concerned, especially that this is your first finals in the league. Uh, yeah, that's definitely big for me. Uh, Siyempre, if you didn't score at the start of the game, it's a big factor in for, for your confidence. Uh, but I just took it one quarter at a time. I, I tried to set the team up and look for my teammates first. And thankfully, the, the lane opened up. I was able to hit some shots. Uh, but credit to my teammates. You know, they, they came out and 
played really well today we could, on both ends, uh, especially in the second half. From your perspective, what happened in the final seconds? Uh, Much to do about nothing. Uh, I think um, maybe Raymond did deserve uh, a technical foul there, but I don't really understand the, the commotion, to be quite honest with you. This is for Aaron from Aaron Bayanda of Sports Radio. Um, LA Tenorio was limited to five markers, and Arts Pito only managed to contribute the basket. Can you talk about the team's collective effort on the defensive side? Uh, well, you know, we really pride ourselves on defense. Um, that's that's our calling card as a as a as a team, and it's not really individuals. You know, of course, there's individual defense pressure. Pretty team defense, Muna. Uh, we try to have each other's backs. <laughs> I know those guys, LA and um, Kuele and, and Nards, will come out in the second game very aggressive. Uh, they're really good players, uh, so we will have to look look to that and make sure that um, we can uh, counter that uh, in the next coming games. Coach, offensively, we have actually played very well. We like, only missed uh, one shot. So if I want to praise you about this play offensively. Well, I thought he took advantage of the defense that was being put up against them. A lot of times when we go up against teams here in the PBA, they pretty much use the man of Cliff to double on Tony Bishop or just to sit in the lane and not play any defense. It happened last conference, last um, series with um, Mike Harris. And I'm sure that's probably what this uh, never is thinking also, whoever is guarding Cliff can sag off and help defensively against other players. And what Cliff did tonight was as soon as he got the ball, he just attacked. Anyway, there was nobody guarding him when he, when he received it, so he just went straight to the basket. So he, he took advantage of the defense, and I'm sure they'll make some adjustments on that. Any more questions? Hey, Coach, um, can you just talk about how Tony Bishop bounced back in this game after a uh, tough part game in game five against Montoya? Well, he bounced back in the second half. His first half wasn't wasn't really that great, but um, you know, Tony Bishop is a perimeter player. A lot of his success depends on his ability to make outside shots. When he's struggling with his perimeter shots, that's when you see him struggle on the court. But as long as he's out there still rebounding and playing defense for us, that's what we really need. I think uh, at this point of the season, the players like Tony. And if he's struggling a little bit offensively, that's not going to have much of an effect on how they play or their attitudes. They're just going to go out and play. And hopefully Tony will get the rhythm and he'll start making his shots like he did tonight. So um, hopefully going into the next game, he will be on. Uh, there are times where he is really a, really a sharp shooter, where he really can't miss from the perimeter. So hopefully that will be in game two. Any more questions? That's it. Uh, Thank you, guys. Appreciate it. Ladies, thank you.